how are the both of you doing today? Phenomenal. Great. How are you? I'm wide awake still. <laughs> <laughs> Very caffeinated, but we're here to talk about the series. And my first question for the both of you is how long have you been into the vampire genre, whether if it's before you got your role or after? So what got you interested in, in the vampire genre? I mean, there's always been vampire content just mm -hmm. thrown at us growing up. Yeah. I was a huge Vampire Diaries fan. I loved Twilight as well. I just was very consistent with Vampire Diaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, What We Do in the Shadows is one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. And the TV show is fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then Imani. <laughs> yeah, I'm more angle towards the monster hunter kind of thing, more than the, the vampire aspect of it. I grew up watching Blade when it was still on like DVR, like popping it into a cassette and watching it um, at my grandma's parents house but I, I I loved Blade and I just I love strong characters I take to strong characters that are uh not menaces not necessarily vigilantes but have their own agendas and there's a deeper rooted reason as to why they go on these these missions and I feel like First Kill is very similar in that regard and in, in this uh there being a, a point of reason for the missions that they go on and why they do what they do you know, that's a good segue to my next question, because I would <laughs> like to also know uh, what kind of challenges will we see both of your characters go through? <sighs> and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so much. There's yeah. just, I don't even know where to begin. Right. But, but I mean, I guess mostly it's just their biggest transformation with, you know, having to make their first kills and um, kind of becoming the, the young women that they are meant to be yeah that and they're still teenage girls yeah so they're still they're going through like <laughs> teenage girl stuff and figuring out who they are and yeah. where they fit in and going through that journey as they change and accepting the change but first being reluctant to the change yeah. I think teenagers just go through that so it's although it's their lineage and their destiny that they're like you know at war with that as well it's still just the, the regular problems of being a teenager yeah. you know yeah very good insight. And I also have another question. Um, did you two audition for different characters before getting the ones that you were given? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> we were truly yeah. Julian and Calliope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, there was no kind of other auditions for any other characters. You two had a jam packed during your auditions. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I was meant to be Cal. She was meant to be Jewel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, final question: uh, What do you think it will be the biggest takeaway for the series? Ooh, so many. Things. I think there's a lot. Yeah, there's, it's a very layered show. Very layered. Um, but if I had to speak from, I just guess from Calliope's character, uh, I think just no matter how self aware self aware you are or confident with self you are or if you, you think you know where you wanna go, please embrace change and embrace the changes that you see within yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, if they mean something to you, if it means a new passion, I always use the analogy, going to college for four years and then falling in love with pottery. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's okay, like embrace those changes and see them through so that you can be the version of yourself that you're truly meant to be. You know, not like pigeon held to what you think you're supposed to be. Totally. And I think a lot of people will really see themselves in these characters as mm -hmm. well, which I'm, I'm so excited for queer audiences to, to watch this and yeah. relate to it and have, have a show like this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Sarah Catherine Hook and Imani Lewis. Thank I you. look forward to the series. Thank Likewise. you. How are you doing, Felicia? Hi, Julia. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Um, sorry I'm late. My son woke up and all hell broke loose. <laughs> How old is your son? Uh, he's seven months. Oh, yeah, that's all hell break loose age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are here to talk about the series. Um, I've seen your credits in a lot of shows that I'm very well fan of, uh, from Family Matters to Everybody Hates Chris to The Punisher. Uh, what intrigued you to take on this project? Thank you. I feel like so much of the work that I've done in the past, even the broad comedies, all, has all led me to this moment because this show does have humor in it. You know, I feel like my background in family drama has also led me to this moment because obviously family is at the center of it. It really is a show about family. Um, I feel like my experience in the YA space on shows like Gossip Girl have also led me. So in some ways, 
all of it led me to this wonderful show where I get to bring all of those together. So in some ways, it's the sweet spot of everything that I've done in the past have all led me to, oh, yeah, bring all those experiences in, into this show. And it's one of the reasons it was so much fun. Like I got to do, you know, be part of all that I have done in the past. Um, how long did it take for the series to be filmed? Uh, was it filmed in 2021? Uh, was it in multiple locations? Yeah, that's all good questions. And given that, you know, we did it at the, during the first year of COVID, um, also complicates that answer because we started, I think we, start, we started in 2020, uh, September, like in the fall of 2020, you know, in the writer's room and breaking stories and writing scripts. And then um, for six months in 2021 is when we actually shot the show. And then the end of 2021, up until about three weeks ago, I was still doing post-production, you know, on the show. So it's been a, a lot, for eight episodes. And again, the, you know, shooting during COVID, really, we started on the set before there were even like vaccines for all. So it was very, it made the process slower, of course. And, you know, but um it really proved to me I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing stops anybody from doing what they want to achieve. That's right. <laughs> now for the name of the show, First Kill, um, did yourself and everyone else in the writer's room came up with a few different names before this name was finally selected? No, because the, it's um, based on a short story called First Kill, uh, written by Victoria Schwab. And that short story was in an anthology of short stories about vampires. And so Netflix bought that short story and hired Victoria then to um, adapt it for series. So she wrote the pilot script and then I was hired to come in, you know, and be the head writer and showrunner for the series. And so one of the things that, um, I decided early on, I love the title First Kill, and that's kind of how I came up with the idea of every episode would be first something. Hmm. Now, that also segues me to my next question. Um, what were some challenging aspects when it came to either scripting for an episode or putting some of your vision in along with um, speaking with the cast about your vision? Um, some of the challenges Really, I'll tell you, this cast, and I, I would tell anybody, it was the most wonderful cast. Um, they all came, we, we were so just committed because again, we were starting during this really overwhelming time. That, and yet, you know, it was at the time where we're trying to get back to work in the middle of a pandemic. So we were really bonded. And I think on day one, really, my first speech on the first scene to the cast and crew was, Two things I want you to know is that I promised my family I would come home as healthy as I left. <laughs> so we're going to follow these protocols that Netflix has put down and they are strict and they are good and we're going to follow them. The second thing is I came to slay. So that is all I care about is everybody needs to get on that page that we're going to all work the hardest we can to create the best show that we can. And that cast, they came every day and left it all on the floor. So the challenges were stuff that didn't have to do with the actual work. You know, the challenges were working during COVID. The challenges were working in Atlanta, which is such a busy production hub that it's hard to find a crew. You know, so there were challenges like that. But in terms of the scripts, like I had such an amazing writing staff. And everybody had great ideas. In the writer's room, we came up with the whole mythology for the whole series. You know, we had all kinds of voices in the room. So this, that kind of stuff, that weren't challenges, it was joy. You know, but it was producing the show under harrowing circumstances. That was probably the biggest challenge, but nothing really to do with the creative. You know, everybody came with their A game for the creative. Very powerful insight. I like how you described everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, going back to the cast, um, Sarah and Imani are also the leads. Uh, what made them stood out to you when it came to either their auditions or delivering a lot of lines and monologues? Oh, that's a good question. Thank you. Well, you know, we started the um, casting process with Juliet um, because we thought that 
we thought she would take longer. And we also wanted to just be very choosy and, you know, and take our time. And we have, you know, five executive producers, including our amazing director, uh, Jet Wilkinson, who directed the first and second episodes. And so with five executive producers, there's also lots of discussion, you know, and lots of opinions. And we didn't always agree, but we were very respectful of all the opinions. And with Sarah Catherine, she was one of the first ones that we saw. And one of the first ones that everyone's like, that's her. I was like, guys, we got to see a lot more people. You know, we just started. You know how it is when you see something great early on, you're like, I'm sure there must be a lot of greats. We'll keep on looking. But we kept seeing others and it kept coming back to no one was as good as she was. So we saw her early and she showed us that she was her earlier. But we saw lots. We saw so many. So it was just what was it about her is that she was just Juliet. She's such a good and nuanced actress. She gives you these tiny little things that makes your words on the page better. And then um, with Amani, now the Calliope took longer. We saw our Juliet early. We saw many, many, many Calliopes before we found the right one. And we kept going, we have to keep looking. We have to keep looking. We have to be as sure about Calliope as we are about um, Juliet. And so she was, Amani was one of the finalists. And then you put the two together and there, that's all she wrote. They had, even on Zoom, you know, they had such great chemistry that we just knew that that's Juliet and Calliope. And, um, you could feel the strength. Calliope has a certain strength about her. And Amani walked in the room and you pay attention. You know, she has that like young adult confidence and strength um, that we knew this character needed. And she stole the role. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. I um, look forward to the series and I can tell it's going to be a wild one. <laughs> we hope so. I hope you enjoy it. And thank you so much for your time today, Julian. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day, Felicia. Thank you. Take care of that baby. Oh, that I will. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs>